Today, I want to talk about a brand new rumor circulating online suggesting that Nintendo Switch 2 may indeed be more powerful than we once thought when in dock mode when it comes to performance, but potentially less powerful in handheld mode. And this is an interesting one coming to us from Moore's Law is Dead, who is a large YouTuber on the platform. I'll have their channel linked in the description down below. The jury is out on just how accurate they are with their track record overall, but there is no doubt been some accurate leaks and information around specifically GPUs, NVIDIA and AMD related info over the course of time. And they were recently on a podcast talking about handhelds and gaming. And ultimately the subject of Nintendo Switch 2 came up and they definitely dropped some info that we had not heard up to this point in time, specifically around the targeted clock speeds and specs potentially of this next gen console. But I wanna discuss this from a little bit different angle because I think some of the headlines you're seeing from the articles going over this report might not exactly tell the entire story. So we'll get on the same page with all of that. Before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your bell notification to join Sunburn Nation if you're new here. And we have to first kick it off with a article posted up over from WCCF Tech which does go over exactly what was said and also provides a little bit of context, which we will break down. Nintendo Switch 2 may hit four teraflops in docked mode, will be clocked crazy low in handheld mode. During the latest episode of the Broken Silicon podcast, Moore's Law is Dead and the Hawks commented on the power of the next Nintendo console. According to Moore's Law is Dead, people at NVIDIA wanted the console to hit four teraflops in docked mode. To achieve this, the console will supposedly be clocked much higher than expected. In handheld mode, on the contrary, the YouTuber heard that the system will be clocked crazy low, possibly below 800 megahertz for a few reasons. Besides achieving better battery life, the Hawks highlighted how the low power consumption would result in a system producing low heat and fan noise, which are important factors to consider for a console that is targeted towards children. Nintendo designed the original Switch with children in mind, as for example, the console's backstand is easy to put back if removed, and its cartridges were made to taste horrible to prevent children from biting them. A console with low power consumption would also not require a lot of cooling and would have no overheating issues in case it gets covered somewhat, which is something that children using the system carelessly could do. During the podcast, it has also been discussed how much ray tracing will be prevalent in Nintendo Switch 2 games. Based on what the Japanese company has done with the current console with its first party titles, Moore's Law is dead and the Hawks speculate how ray tracing will be mostly present in first party titles, considering how Nintendo does a lot of optimization work to achieve the best possible visuals with acceptable performance, while third party developers will stick to rasterization and use Nvidia DLSS to achieve better visual quality and performance. The Nintendo Switch 2, which has been described as a conservative hardware evolution by Chinese manufacturer Mobapad, has yet to be officially revealed. Whether it launches later this year or in early 2025, the official reveal shouldn't be too far off in the future. So all the way up to this point in time with the limited information we have around what to expect from Switch 2, some of the more credible reports out there have suggested the idea that the power level of this console when docked is somewhat on paper close to the PS4 Pro or in that Series S PS4 Pro type of range, maybe even Xbox One X, but it's hard to compare these apples to apples as that's just not how technology works. However, you probably noticed that when docked, it is targeting that four teraflops number, which doesn't mean as much as you probably think it does. But if you want to have an apples to apples comparison with that number, about 4.2 teraflops is what the PS4 Pro is capable of. And that in raw horsepower would line up. However, the claims of being clocked at around 800 megahertz is the more concerning stat here, at least on paper, because it sounds like it just on paper might not be enough power to get the kind of visual fidelity you want out of your games in handheld mode, especially considering that we're talking about this thing potentially having an 8-inch display with, with a 1080p screen, and you would hope that we're at least able to run the modern-day PS4, Xbox One-level games where a game like Elden Ring is in the conversation and you don't have to worry about slowdown and you could play it on either portable or dock mode without too much of a problem. And to that question, I would say we really don't know how all the components in this system is going to work together. And I also don't know that Moore's Law is Dead's contact would have that exact answer either. And is the 800 megahertz speed something that is the highest it will go or could it overclock in situations where it needs to? I do agree with the fact that Nintendo's not going to want to put out something that generates a lot of heat 
or runs near as hot or loud as something like a Steam Deck. If you've ever held one of those while gaming on a AAA modern day game, you know just how loud and hot they can get. It's still impressive what Steam did with that. It does, definitely doesn't get excessive, but it can heat up quite a bit compared to what you would experience with a Nintendo Switch or even a Switch OLED model. And I would think that Nintendo's not gonna go anywhere near having this thing run like a mini PC does in terms of some of the more recent de tech devices we've seen released within that space. That said, the larger conversation and what you have to remember is that Nintendo for the first time is really working with Nvidia from the ground up to build a custom chip for Nintendo Switch 2, not necessarily something that was done with the Switch 1, where the Tegra X1 was essentially more or less a chip that they could grab off the shelf and plug into the Switch, and not necessarily something built from the ground up. We don't know the limitations and the implementation, rather, of what DLSS really is in this console and exactly what version of it we would be running on the Switch 2, but considering it's in the realm of 3.1 to 3.5, there's a solid chance we're running these games at a much lower native base resolution on the Switch in handheld mode, and Nintendo is really planning on using DLSS to do some of the heavy lifting to not have to worry about clocking this thing above 800 megahertz. I don't think they're going to have something that is necessarily a day and night difference in handheld play versus docked mode play. You know how Nintendo is. They're very picky about this type of stuff. Yes, they care about battery life. Yes, they care about the system not overheating and being overly noisy, but they're also not going to have a fragmented user experience where when you just take your Switch off the dock, it immediately looks like you went back to a PS3 era game compared to something more like PS4 Pro when in docked. I don't think we're going to see a drastic drop off like that. And we're in the age of AI being able to make low resolution images look incredible and do it on the fly. And Nintendo's partnering with NVIDIA, who is literally leading the charge with all of this AI tech and DLSS is revered as really like something of a magic trick within the development community. So I'm thinking that if this is indeed a true report, the end user experience is still going to be incredibly similar to what we have with the Switch today, where you know that certain games just don't look as good in handheld mode as they do in dock play. And even with Princess Peach Showtime, when playing through that recently, uh, some of the visual blur and things that you would see in handheld mode definitely stood out to me more than some of the other Nintendo Switch games that I've played over the years. And there's plenty of other titles that I could go down the list of that there's certain ones that just chug a little bit in handheld mode, and there's others that you barely notice a difference at all. I think we're gonna be in for more or less the same treatment this time around, and for some of those larger, bigger demanding AAA, massive open world games, you might notice a dip off in handheld play, but nothing to break the experience. And that's where I really want to dive into the portion of the conversation that I do want to hear more from you guys on, which how do you feel about, let's just say the claim is accurate, that four teraflops is the number we're going with in docked play, and it's somewhat similar to that of a PlayStation 4 Pro's performance. Is that something that you are happy with, considering that, keeping in mind, they have some extra tools in their belt like DLSS to upscale the resolution, not to mention all of the ray tracing tools that will be packed in with that. Is that something that upgraded above a PS4 Pro just slightly is something you're very excited with? Or is that something that you think isn't powerful enough for Nintendo's next gen handheld? I personally feel like that's more than enough power. If you're telling me that I have the potential to run something that looks as visually impressive as God of War Ragnarok, as that game runs and looks on the PS4 Pro, in handheld potentially, not at that same resolution obviously, but you have the option to take that with you natively on the go. That is what I want from a next generation console from Nintendo. I don't think it has to be crazy over that benchmark because we're then getting into the territory of Nintendo having to charge upwards of $600 plus to get some kind of notable tech improvement over that. And we know Nintendo's not gonna do that. We're expecting this thing to launch around the $400 price point, And that's realistically for that price, probably where the tech is at today. But does that make you more or less excited? Do you believe any of this report? Is it alarming to you at all to hear the 800 megahertz clock speed potentially for handheld play on the Switch 2? Do you think that's gonna be an issue? Or do you think DLSS will kind of do the rest of the heavy lifting that needs to be done and Nintendo wouldn't have done something like that otherwise? Kind of like what I am thinking. So make sure you share all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below, regardless of if we agree or disagree. Thanks so much for watching the video today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your bell notification on your way out. And I will see you guys next time.